give the call to the member for Chisholm. Thank you so much, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations. What policy approaches has the Albanese Labor government changed to better support our aged care workforce? The call to the Minister for Employment, Workplace Relations and the Minister for the Arts. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker, and thanks to the member for Chisholm for, for the question and for her commitment in improving aged care and improving working conditions for people. Uh, both the former government and this government were presented with the same information by the Royal Commission. And the Royal Commission finding, and I quote, was the evidence is clear that the quality of care and the quality of jobs in aged care are inextricably linked. Australia's aged care is understaffed and the workforce underpaid, and going on to say that there are other reasons why the sector as a whole has had difficulties attracting and retaining well-skilled people to work in aged care. These include low wages. So, presented with that information, there were two different approaches as to how you deal with the aged care workforce, because it was clear that if you don't have enough staff, you end up with residents who need more significant treatment. Per day in aged care costs two to three hundred dollars. Per day in hospital costs two thousand dollars. Not just neglect of the aged care residents, but neglect of the workforce. Punish the workforce, punish the residents, and cost the budget more. So there were two approaches as to how you handle this. The approach from those opposite was just give a couple of one-off payments. One-off payments of eight hundred dollars, which were not well administered, not well administered. And people don't go back to a workforce on a permanent basis Member because Barker. there's going to be a one-off payment. They want to know what's happening in pay rates overall. The Fair Work Work Value case was being held. Under the previous government, the decision was it would not turn up and ask for a pay rise. Our decision was we went with a submission that said the Commonwealth supports the a minimum Deacon. wage increase for aged care workers. Under them, they refused to tell the Fair the Work Commission will pause whether the moment. government the minister would actually fund the minister an will increase. Pause. Sorry. The minister will pause. The member for Deakin has been continually interjecting after, I've given, after I gave a general warning, which I said there'd be actions for. So the action now is that you will leave the chamber under 94A. Just ask the minister to continue. Thanks, Speaker. They refused to say they'd fund a pay rise. We put in a submission that said the Commonwealth will provide funding to support any increases to award wages. What difference did that make? It meant a 15 per cent pay rise was awarded. It meant for a level four direct care employee, they now earn more than $5 an hour extra. That's nearly $200 extra a week. That's more than $10,000 extra a year. And that's why we are now seeing people being able to be retained and returning to the workforce and choosing to be retained, uh, choosing to be trained for the workforce. It was the deputy leader, now today the acting leader, who said there are concerns out there today about the actual collapse of the aged care system as we know it. Well, what we have seen is now there are nurses in nursing homes. 98 per cent compliance. Order. The Minister's time has concluded.